It's Christmas time again, and you know what that means. Time to look back on the games I had for a system growing up. Look, I know it isn't Christmas, and in fact, I'm making this video five months after I was supposed to release it. But I have red in my ledger, and I want to get it out, so just go along with it, okay? So this Christmas, I want to look back at the second system I ever got as a kid, and one that came everywhere with me, the Nintendo Game Boy. Some of my fondest video game memories involved being on a road trip, or at my cabin with my parents where there was no power, or at day camp, or at school, and burning away the hours playing these very games I'm going to talk about today on this very special, and very late, episode of Video Game Nostalgia. Goodbye. I think this is the most obvious game on this list, as pretty much every Game Boy originally came with Tetris, and we all had it. It was the safest bet if you wanted to use the link cable and play with a friend. For me, Tetris was actually a frustrating title to own because my mom was addicted to it, and it meant if my Game Boy was ever missing, it was more than likely in my mom's possession. I don't really have much to say about the game itself, I mean it's Tetris, and we all know what you are getting here. I was a huge fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and this is one of the very first games I got from my Game Boy, and honestly, one of the only games I ever needed to bring with me because I never got tired of it in the early days. I was always impressed by how detailed the character sprites were, and I found the difficulty and length just right for a pick up and play game for the system. Now I find it to be less impressive, but that nostalgia still takes over, and I find myself playing through the whole game every time I turn it on. I have no idea how I ended up getting this game as I was never a huge baseball or sports game guy growing up, but somehow it ended up in my collection and surprisingly, I played it quite a bit. Baseball is the most basic kind of baseball game you can play, and actually, that isn't a bad thing. I get quite a few hours fun out of this one, for what it was, and still today, I get excited if I can hit a dinger or two. I remember being super excited seeing this game used at a local video rental store because there was nowhere in my city where you could buy used games at the time, and especially not Game Boy games. I begged my mom to get it for me, and she did, even though I'm sure she really couldn't afford it at the time. I got it home and honestly had a blast with it. It's an action puzzler, and honestly, a very good one. I thoroughly enjoyed navigating the sets of stairs, collecting carrots, and taking out the enemies in hilarious ways. So mom, it was an investment in good times. Boy oh boy was I excited for this one. Mega Man 2 is well documented as my favorite NES game, and I couldn't wait to have a portable Mega Man to take on the go, and did this ever deliver? Mega Man on the Game Boy amazed me, as it retained almost everything that made the series so special on the NES. My only real gripe was with the sacrifice to making everything look so pretty was to make it look bigger, which then created an issue as it was hard to identify objects off screen for jumps and avoiding enemies. Really a small complaint is I enjoyed thrashing Robot Masters, taking their powers, all to amazing music with pretty visuals on the go. This was a game my brother got, and I'm sure he was more interested with the alligator on the box than what the game was actually about. We had no idea this was a pinball game, let alone a very good one. I have never been super good at this game, and I have to tell you, I was a little irritated while capturing footage for this video because I had probably my best run ever on this game, before I realized it hadn't been recording at all, and I had to in fact completely reshoot the footage. Well, fun game. If you like pinball, give it a shot. I can't lie to you here, we got this game solely for the 4 player adapter, but I did end up playing this game quite a bit. I can't say I was ever very good at it, but I sure tried to be. My problem with racing games is I hate breaking for turns. Always have. There isn't much to this game, standard early racing game. I wish it offered more of an arcade experience, but it doesn't, and really isn't all that memorable. Okay, I know what you were thinking, I had a pretty uninspiring library of Game Boy games growing up and missing some of the greats. Don't worry, this is where business is about to pick up. For whatever reason, I never ended up getting the first Mario Land game on Game Boy, but I wasn't going to let the second pass me by. 
I was coming off the high of playing Super Mario World on the SNES, and this game seemed to take a lot of cues from that game, mixed in with the zaniness of the first land game, and create a bizarre masterpiece. I will never forget my first journey through getting the six golden coins and my battle with Wario, aka Bizarro Mario. I am fascinated why some people don't like this game, but it will always be a favorite of mine. I really got into hockey around age 12 and wanted a great hockey game to take on the go. Since there wasn't EA and NHL at the time, I went for the Game Boy port of Blades of Steel. I was really impressed with the cutscene after you scored a goal showing the giant image of the goalie. In retrospect, this was actually kind of annoying as it just created an unnecessary stoppage in play, but I was a kid who thought it looked really cool. Overall, it was Blades of Steel on the go, and Blades of Steel is awesome, so fun times. I mean, who didn't get lost in the Mortal Kombat hype back in the early 90s? I mean, it was so mature, so edgy, and you could kill people. Being a huge horror movie fan as a kid, I was all over this, and especially being able to play it on the go. Unfortunately, the game is terrible and really hard to play, and honestly, I don't know if I ever performed one fatality on it, ever. Also, it kind of looks like crap, but for nostalgia's sake, it does bring back good memories as it's one of the only Game Boy games that I distinctly remember playing with a friend on the school bus using our link cables. Well, what I remember is having my ass handed to me. I wasn't so good at fighting games. And here it is, my favorite and most played Game Boy game, Link's Awakening. I've read that this was originally supposed to be a tech demo of putting a link to the past on the Game Boy, and I don't know how much truth there is to that, but the look and feel was definitely there for me as a kid. I would have a hard time describing how much fun and how many hours I put into this game, but I can say with certainty that I have only ever played through it once, which may surprise some people. I've always meant to go back and play it completely through again, but just haven't. Maybe that will change in the next little while. So I'm going to include two games here in this post for a very simple reason. Why I've owned both of these games since childhood, I've never really played either. I was just getting into RPGs at the end of the Game Boy's life and picked both of these up because I love the cool, simple look of the box art. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get into a long, drawn-out RPG on a portable system at that time and have just never gone back to playing them, which is a real shame because I honestly had quite a lot of fun playing them to capture footage for this video. If I live to a thousand, I may eventually get through all the RPGs I own. This game. This terrible, terrible game. I was and am a huge wrestling fan, and after LGN knocked Royal Rumble and Raw out of the park on the SNES, I was looking for that to be recreated on the Game Boy. Of course, back then we didn't have online reviews or videos, so I bought this game without knowing that it wasn't that, and man was I disappointed. But I made the best of a bad situation and still played a ton of it, unfortunately all the while wishing I was playing a better game. So those are the Game Boy games I had growing up, and as you can see, I missed out on some of the true greats from the handheld's fascinating library. I think that is why I'm so interested in learning about the games I missed out on and going back and playing them today. Thank you for joining me on this look back at the games I had for the Game Boy growing up. And from my family to yours, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Again, I'm aware it's May.